everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make some, well I've got two style boxes, they're made exactly the same way but they're two different sizes because what I've done here and what I started to make and I thought these I know not everybody's going to be able to get if you're outside of the UK. I mean I could be very wrong but um, I thought when I was making them I thought I don't know if this is really going to be used by a lot of people and then I had these that I want to make a box for and this is a nicer, this is one and a quarter by three and a half by three and a half tall so that's quite a good size you can put you know all kinds of things in there, hand cream stuff like that. So I'm going to show you how to make both because they are yeah, both a nice handy size. Inside here, if you're wondering, these are these great big chocolate pennies, or half penny. Um, it's a shame really because I was I wanted to try and take that sticker off, but it leaves all of the you know the mess that stickers do and um it's on the queen's face and I I quite wanted the queen's face on the front, but it doesn't matter. Instead we've got the boat there, so or the ship even. And um I think they look adorable, really, really sweet. I've done one that's going to hang on a tree because this one is going to be for someone that I know will hang it on the tree. And it just opens at the top and then, oh, actually, I did put a glue dot on the bottom, but then I thought to myself, it doesn't actually really need one. So I can just prize that one off and probably, um, you know, do away with the with the glue dot. It's, it's entirely up to you. This one here, I don't think I've done it in this one. It's when I realised I've done it in both. Oh, maybe I did. Oh, well. It was, I don't know why I did because it wouldn't move. But um, yeah, I think on this one, I thought I won't do the glue dot. So and uh, they're lovely and the chocolate's nice it's fair trade chocolate and I've I've actually I do enjoy that chocolate because you know some of the um, without sounding snobbish some of the cheapy chocolates taste cheapy <laughs> I don't like it so but these ones taste delicious this one here are the Smarties they're little penguins now on their own that's quite cute as it is I guess but I make packaging so I like to make something a bit more fun so I just done this and I think it's really really sweet again all made exactly the same way and you just open up the top there and then you've got that one which I didn't um, stick down so yeah I think that's really sweet and uh, they will be enjoyed and no doubt eaten very very quickly so let me show you how to make these okay so I'm going to give you the scoring for both and the both will be on my blog and then I've got my pattern paper for that one and for that one I'm almost done on my little packagings now, so yeah, some bigger gifts you just have to kind of just wrap. I can't really make gift bags for some of the larger pieces, but um, all the little bits, it's been really fun this year. So for the this size, so for the, the thicker size one, you want a piece of cardstock that's nine and three quarters by six and a half. And along the nine and three quarter side, you want to score at three and a half, four and three quarters, eight and a quarter and nine. You have this quarter inch tab. Then rotate it and score at one and a quarter, four and three quarters and six. Okay, so that's for that one. And then while I've got my scoreboard, if you want to make that thin one, I picked up these from the co-op. But I would imagine they're sold in other places, but I don't know if it's exclusive to the co-op for the you know this kind of size. And I think they were on offer. It was three for two. I think they were 150 each something like that so but they are nice so this is the nine and a quarter by five and a quarter for this one along the nine and a quarter side you want to score at four and one eighth of an inch and four and a half and then eight and five eighths of an inch and nine so again you'll have that quarter inch tab you only need a small tab and then along the shorter side you want to score at three eighths of an inch four and a half and four and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's the scoring, and then I'll also just um, tell you the pattern paper pieces. So, for the one to make this coin, you'll want two pieces that are three and seven eighths of an inch squared. I'm using this beautiful cardstock, and it's one that I made all those lovely bells from the Christmas decorations. The white Christmas is just so pretty. And then for the smaller ones, I've used the Christmas tails. So two pieces of that and then the acetate, I think it's the same size, yeah, so that's three and seven eighths of an inch squared as well. The acetate is optional, you know, it doesn't have to be there. So again, don't worry if you don't have that. And also you could put some vellum in there if you wanted to have something. And um, yeah, it doesn't stop it falling out, I guess, because I've put the glue dot on. I mean, that wouldn't fall out at all. 
that one wouldn't either because the circle's not big enough but that's for the gold coin and then for the smaller but thicker one this is a piece of three and three eighths of an inch squared you want two and again the acetate must be the same yeah all right so that's all your measurements we'll go through those circles and everything in a moment okay so I'm going to put one of them on high speed so I will show you how to construct one the other one is exactly the same even the cutting and everything so what you want to do before we cut and score it's probably best to die cut your window and it doesn't have to be circle you might want to do a square isn't it? again entirely up to you you can always change these things up which I know many of you do but I'm just going to get some washi tape and I just want to sit this circle in the right hand side so you've got your left hand square here then you'll have your side and then you've got another square here it's within that square that you want to pop your um, you know whatever shape it is that you're going to cut and you want to make sure that you have even border there won't be much it'll be about a quarter of an inch there to that score line there to there and to the top so I'm just going to pop some washi in the middle and do that one there and then I'll get this one as well so you can just see maybe see a bit clearer so you're working within this big square here ignore that square ignore the side it's this square and the diameter of these is because these Sizzix dies cut from the inside which I like I wish more dies would do that it's a diameter of two and seven eighths but three will be fine it's kind of just in between and that's for the thicker one and then this one here is uh, just under three and a half so again I'm just going to stick this one in place and run those both through my die machine okay that larger one I've just squeezed through my Gemini it's got it actually a little bit mucky on the top but all of that I don't know why that's just not cut that last little piece um, is going to be trimmed away most of it anyway so it will go through it will roll the edges ever so slightly but it's, as long as it's on the this end we're going to cut most of that away. You only need a little bit of it on, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so those are now all cut out. Now, if you, the next bit I'm going to do, you might prefer to do it once you've stuck your paper down. So you might feel that you want to stick your pattern paper on here first, then put your die and cut both through both layers you might just have to use like your metal shim or something I'm doing my separate I just prefer to do it that way I don't know why because I tell you that you can do it <laughs> without doing it that way but hey ho it's entirely up to you I just like to show you different ways because we've all got our preferences so I'm just going to add some glue to one piece of the pattern paper for both of these boxes and stick it on the side where you haven't done your circle so just get that stuck down now you might as well do it while it's all flat and if you're using a directional paper you just want to make sure that your tab is on the right hand side and then you know that you've got your box up the right way so I'm just sticking that one in there like so okay so this is to decorate around here and you again you might not even want to do that so you don't need this for the minute I'll put them there so the smaller circle you just want to sit within this piece it's, it, it is like I said it's very tight you've only got a small little piece but I do like it with the pattern paper on it but it will fit inside the size that I gave you here so as long as your inner cut line circle sorry is five is two and seven eighths of an inch then it will you know be fine for this size so I'm just gonna pop that one there do the same with this piece and get those cut. I mean, there must be something wrong with that die because it's almost in the same place on that one. It's definitely not the machine because it's cutting everything else and I've been using it a lot and it's been fine so it must be that die. Keep these, they're always handy for little gift tags. So you know if you're doing something that's got matching, you've got the white ones from before so you can layer it up, just put a little hole punch there and you've got a nice little gift tag ready to go. So in fact that's probably what I will do. And that one there as well so don't throw anything away next we just want to stick down the acetate so the larger acetate is going to go behind this one here and you just want to use your thinnest tape so I'm using the red tape here and this is I'll do it in millimeters because 
it's, it's four mil and you just want to really butt it right up to the edge because you don't have much overhanging and you don't want any of the stickiness to come into your actual frame. So I'm just going to do this on both pieces of acetate, just go around the very edge. Okay, so I've got my smaller piece of acetate for this one. Like I said, you're doing them both the same way. I'm just doing both because I need to get them done, so I just thought I'd film it all. And just make sure that your tape doesn't show and that that acetate sits within that square. And just push it right down, make sure all the air bubbles are out and it should go darker in colour. And now we've got that nice window. And then with my piece here, that's going to go right over the top and sit within that square like so. So I'm just going to use some of my Kalau and just, you don't need much at all. But you see what I mean? You've only got a very thin piece around the side, so it's completely optional. You may want to use some inks and colour your cardstock or use a coloured cardstock, maybe an embossing folder. You know, you might want to stamp your paper with your card. You don't have to do the pattern paper like I have, but that's just the way I've done this one because I do like it. And then just sit that following that circle. And because you kept it in the middle of the square piece, it will fit into this square. Like so, I'm going to pull it a little bit because I'm going to put tinsel trim around this one so it will cover that little bit of white. But now you will have this. Also, you might want to fold and burnish your lines. Once you've cut your hole out of, you know, your aperture out of this actual cardstock, you may well want to fold and burnish everything then because you might see your, you know, the sections better. But now I can fold and burnish all of these score lines. Okay, so they're all ready. Now I've gone ahead and already cut this one, but I'm going to show you on this one and it's exactly the same way because these boxes, like I said, are exactly the same. They're just slightly different sizes. So with the tab on the, that little quarter inch tab on the right hand side, you just, first of all, you want to cut up these score lines here. So you cut up those like square, so you've got that square piece there, and then along here and here. Cut that little piece out at the very bottom, which is this piece here. You can see I've cut up those ones the same. And then just go in and just take a wedge off of all of these bits. Take a little wedge off of the tab so again, you've got nothing hanging over the edge, hanging over the edge, that's something hanging, <laughs> that's my accent coming out. And then you just want to cut on that score line and that score line. Again, cutting a little wedge off of that one and remove that very thin piece all the way down there. Okay, and then you want to cut up that next score line and cut down that one. So now you've removed that and this is going to be your tab for the top so just cut a wedge. I wouldn't go, well don't go crazy crazy because you want it to be able to lock in but just cut a nice wedge and then so now we're along this side you're going to cut down these two here. Okay this whole section here you're going to remove so I'm just going to bring in my other scissors there and just cut away the score line, take that piece out completely. And then we're on this one here. You want to remove that top piece. And then this is another tab, so just take a wedge off. Like I said, don't go mad. I probably took too much off that first one. It'd probably still be okay, but you want this piece here to lock in against them. So with this top piece, you just want to take a little slither off of each end because you can always take more off if you want it. If it's like quite tight when we go to close it, then you can always go and cut a bit more away. But I always say take a little bit off first and then go back into it. So now you will have two, if you're doing both these sizes, but you can see exactly the same. So you've got your top piece and that flap. You've got your tabs. I've got the top piece and the flap and the tabs. You've got your tab on the side, tab on the side, and then your four pieces along the bottom. Okay, so I'll construct this one and then I'll do that one on high speed. I'm just going to use my fast 
grab the Cosmic Shimmer. First of all, along this tab here, this tiny little one, you're just going to add some glue and then fold this over. In fact, you might want to just, if you're using a wet glue, I'm just going to spread that out a little bit because I don't want it oozing out onto my acetate. And then just fold that over and stick that down. I'm gonna... Yeah, it's okay, it's not come through. So that's that done. So you can see now it's all coming together. And then with the base, I always like to stick the back one up first and then I'm going to pop some glue on each of those. Like so. And then put one on the back. Oh, little air bubble there. And then stick that one down. And turn it upside down. You can just go in there with your bone folder everything out and then you just want to bring all that down and it should oh, that one's not going in right maybe it's a bit too long I'm just going to trim that bit off there yeah so see that I've got it's a little bit too I need to take a little bit of cardstock off so I'm just going to cut down you'll see wherever if the cardstock rolls then there's pressure so you need to remove it but now there we go locks in ah that's what I remember doing I trimmed it can you see it's coming over there now you might be disguising that I haven't disguised it because I just cut it away but how depending on how you decorate so for the for example the tinsel there will probably end up covering that let me just see I'm going to take a little bit off because I did say you might end up cutting a bit off so I'm going to just take about one eighth of an inch off you still want it to be able to obviously close which it does yeah that's better all right so just snip a little bit away but that's now done I'm going to cut the side pieces give you the measurements for those in a minute I'll put it on high speed but this is just some of my pipe cleaners from my Christmas stash that I found and um, so I'm just going to go around and stick that around there and then I've used one of the Christmas towels and I'll put the little Merry Christmas one on there because that's from the matching collection. So I'll do all that. This one now I'm going to quickly just stick together. Okay, so that one's now all finished. I'm just going to show you or give you the sizes to those pieces and again this one here and I've just cut these bits here. So these strips for this one are a quarter of an inch by three, uh, no by four sorry. And you just want three, one for the side, two, sorry one for each side and one for the top. And then this one here you want three pieces. That will go, just check that I've done them right. Yeah I did. And these are one inch by just over three, mine's just over three and a quarter, but three and a quarter would be fine. So I'm just going to stick those down. So there it is all finished. So it's two gift boxes and one really in this tutorial. These are very, very cute. These were actually from Iceland as well, 99p, the little penguins. I think, yeah, they're nice little gifts. And then these just look really quite luxurious. They've got a nice, very, very Christmassy look about them. And this is very much my kind of colour. Um, kind of, you know, I love the reds, the greens and the golds or silvers at Christmas. If you do want to have the hanging part, that's just some gold mirror cardstock that I just stuck before I stuck the pattern paper on the back. But you could put some ribbon in there if you wanted to, it's entirely up to you, but I really do, yeah, I think they're really sweet. So thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. All the supplies and measurements for both boxes will be on my blog and the supplies list is always shared below. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.